Okay, what's up, people? Uh, Strider here. I am taking some time out to talk to you guys about Street Fighter. Now, Street Fighter, it, at one point in time, this was my all-time favorite franchise of all franchises. Um, I thought it was the best fighting game. It didn't matter which version because they had never let me down. Um, and I got every single version. I, till this day, I have every version of Street Fighter, excluding Street Fighter 4. I even have the horrible Street Fighter movie game. This is how much of a fanatic I was about this game since Street Fighter 2. I still collect the figures from Soda. Uh, there's a couple I'm still looking for, but I have almost all of them, minus about four of them. Uh, I have the Resaurus versions. I have... Uh, I used to have the G.I. Joe versions. You name it, I had it. The animes, I loved the 97 one. Didn't really like the 2002 or 2001 alpha one. And Generations was awesome. But anyway, we're going to just talk. I'm going to go over a little bit about what I liked about Street Fighter. And then about the issues I have with some of the choices they made with uh, Street Fighter 4 and their fugly art direction. Okay, so um, I'm going to be real with you guys real quick. Street Fighter's art direction, the artists and the uh, some of the styles and techniques they use, you know, like the watercolor technique and all that stuff, that influenced me as an artist. Bengus' work, uh, Nishimura Sensei's work, Akiman a little bit, because I didn't really know that he did all a lot of this stuff. And when you look up a lot of the original artwork, it says Capcom design team, so more than one person had something to do with it. But anyway, Capcom's Street Fighter artwork influenced me heavily as an artist. Um, I love the the original, you know, the style they started out with. Now, as I said before, I really hate what they did with Street Fighter 4 because people just don't look right. Characters look way too big. Characters don't look on model. You know, you see Ryu's pants right there. They've been changing slowly since Alpha, but in Street Fighter 3, they went back to being what they originally were. You see Ryu's form up there? He is muscular, but he's not stupid, ridiculously, like, you know, uh, unproportioned, you know? He was always supposed to be really big and beefy, but not to the point where it looked kind of silly, you know what I mean? Um, a lot of times their excuse is, we did this to appeal to Western audiences, which is a bunch of bullshit. You can do it with one or two characters. I mean, Guy will be in super muscular because that's part of the appeal because our action heroes used to be all muscular and stuff i mean they still are if you if you never got over the um old school action heroes like me um but you know in comics you have kind of varying degrees of musculature so it doesn't make sense for them to stereotype all american characters and things that appeal to americans should be freaking roided up and super huge that's a little ignorant you know what i mean so yet again i i'm you know Sticking on uh, Ryu's design. We like variety, but I'll start with Ryu. It's a very versatile design. And it's pretty nice that they were able to give Masoyama props, you know, in a video game that ended up being timeless. Because a lot of the manga that uh, was based on Masoyama, if, for those of you who don't know, Masoyama is, he was a karate champion. He created Kyokushin Karate. Um, Takuma Sakazaki... Ryu, uh, Ryo, there's a number of characters. The one guy from Ga Grappler Baki. Um, all those characters are all based off of Mas Oyama, a.k.a. God Hand. He, is a, he was a real um, karate master. He uh, often would knock people out with one punch. And when he ran out of karate masters to fight, he fought bulls. And he was knocking them out with single punches sometimes. Anyway, it's nice that they're able to, you know, make a timeless design based on him. But the same love and the same attention to detail should have went into the other characters. Because as much as we love Street Fighter, you can see the favorites because they're, they're a little bit more well thought out. And then there's other characters. Characters like Fei Long or characters like Blanca. I mean, I know a lot of people love them, but I'm sorry, I'm Brazilian. We don't have fucking green wolves running around in brazil sorry i know there's a lot of people who love blanca but no sorry that design is racist as hell 
I mean, I know people like it, and it's timeless. You know, he if he was from just an unknown jungle, fine, it'd be cool. But you put a whole country on top of the character. And maybe it's me being picky, but I just don't think that's cool. I mean, Japan gets countless karate gi having heroes, and the you know Brazil gets that. I'm not feeling it, but you know. I think the love should have been spreaded across these characters. An issue I have with Capcom is that too many of the characters are kind of racial stereotypes. And this especially falls on the dark-skinned characters. And I know people are like, oh, there we go with race, blah, blah, blah. I love Street Fighter. I'm not talking to you guys because you guys just play the game just to play the game. I'm talking to the people who one day want to be getting paid for designing these kind of things, you know? And don't want to befall these same things. And I understand that you take your cues from your producer or your game director. But certain things should be avoided like the plague. And I think racial stereotyping is one of them. So many of you would say, uh, how, do we do, how do we fix this? What's an example of it being done right? Well, there's not many in Street Fighter, but SNK has Seth. They've got a couple others, but they're kind of similar. Because Heavy D has the same type of hair, just a different color. But the King ding -a best black character they've ever put in any of these games is Dudley. He's hardcore. He's a gentleman. He's rich. And he's got an appealing design. It's not bullshit, but I'm going to go even further. I've been studying Jeet Kune Do for 25 years. And when I was on DeviantArt several years back, we had a jam where it was Create Yourself as... A Street Fighter 4 character because we were all trying to figure out what Street Fighter 4 is gonna be like so here's me in the game um, you can check my DeviantArt website the link is on my uh, it's in my profile for YouTube but anyway the idea was to create a guy who trains in Kung Fu but obviously if he trains in Jeet Kune Do he doesn't have to wear specific clothes because there's no specific gear for Jeet Kune Do because it's a mixture of everything. You're not sticking, you're not stuck to one style. You just show your mastery of everything. But as you can see, I use the design style that you see Capcom has because I told you they influenced my art. And the character, I think, if he was in a game, I would want to play as him. And now if his moves were cool, I'd be like, hey, that makes it even better. And I would make the moves pure Jeet Kune Do related, like Wing Chun, kickboxing, Kempo based. So that, you know, he has, you know, he's pretty well-rounded. He's fairly fast. Speed would obviously be the focus and range because I'm tall. I'm 6'5". So it would be slick to see how, if Capcom could implement something like that. The design doesn't look like any one specific uh, uh, country. I mean, I'm, I've got brown skin, so, I mean, I guess that's the only other thing you could put in there. But besides that, the design works on multiple levels. And it's more complex than the, the art you see in the Street Fighter games. Street Fighter 4, they've been putting a lot of crap on their characters. I mean, Street Fighter 4 seems to have this history of just disrespecting the franchise as far as what they put in there. Because Ono doesn't know what he's talking about. He put Rufus in the game because he thought it'd be funny. To have a fat character. Fat characters are never funny. Maybe the first time you see them, you're like, wow. But then after that, you learn how to play as the ga the character based on the game. And I mean, once you learn his moves, either the character is effective or ineffective. Him being fat doesn't really come into play. So, yeah, more respect needs to be had. And more quality design needs to go back into the series. So my favorite character in the series is Guile. I just think it's, uh, I guess it's ironic because he's American and here I am, uh, Brazilian American, but whatever. He, I think the fact he only has two moves and he's a big guy, but he's agile, it makes sense. But they don't push his style far enough because it's been like 20 years, 20 some odd years, and he's only had two moves. I think they need to step it up. He needs to have some XMA attacks because if he can do a flash kick, he should be able to do other aerial kicks to close range uh, or close gaps uh, and jump over fireballs, you know. EX kind of had a good idea with the opening gambit where he did a rush of punches and then a sideways no-handed cartwheel with no with a really sick range going backwards, like a high jump. And that was cool. It made sense. 
but somehow the rest of uh, Capcom ignores that this was done. Yet, Street Fighter 4 plays an awful lot like EX. And those of you who are hardcore, you know what I'm talking about. But anyway, Guile's design is really simple. You can clearly tell they've been looking a lot at Dolph Lundgren with the no eyebrows and the big brow and just his build screams Dolph Lundgren. Uh, it's like Red Scorpion with a flat top. Those of you who are action movie fans, you know what I'm talking about. Um, or even Ivan Drago, but the American version. And they made sure they let you know he's American with the American flags all over his shoulders. But, you know, the design is clean. It's pretty cool. And I like the fact that he's not one of the fighters who fights for glory. He fights because he's trying to avenge a friend. He also fights because, I mean, it's his job. Soldiers kind of do this on a regular basis. This is why I never understood why, for the longest time, he took a back seat to a guy who travels the world doing karate. I don't understand how one kind of trumps the other. This is his job, just like Chun-Li. It's her job. Why not have them be the focus? Here's one of my designs for uh, what I call Ultimate Street Fighter. This is Ultimate Guile. He's been... Uh, uh, pretty much uh, brought into the fold by Interpol. Um, you can see I kept the design pretty much the same, but I only did little de I only changed little details to make him look more like an American action hero. Um, he works for Interpol, so he's got his gear, but he would probably fight more first. But you see, the thing with a good design is that you can you can add to it, and it still works. You know, you look at Tekken, look at what Kazuya looked like when uh, Tekken 1 first came out. And I mean, look at him now. It's all the, the components are there, but the design just evolved. And that's what a good design does. I mean, Street Fighter tried this with that bullshit DLC. But I mean, all that was an afterthought. You can give us 20 billion afterthoughts, but that doesn't mean that you change the design. Because when the next Street Fighter game comes out, none of those are going to be like that. But when you play games like Tekken, every single time a new Tekken comes out, they completely revamp the characters or at least change details. I mean, look at Tekken 1. They look like garbage. But when Tekken 2 came out, they went back and they changed things, even if it's something tiny like facial features. I mean, look at the detail. All of a sudden, the details start showing up because they're getting better at their craft and they have more ideas. You look at Tekken 3. The roster expanded and detail kept on, you know, taking a front seat to everything else. They amped up all the details, colors, styles, everything. Tekken Tag. I mean, Tekken's been around for just as long as Street Fighter, and somehow they managed to keep this stuff fresh every time. And you don't lose anything, you know? All the characters they paid close attention to. I mean, there's design choices that I'm kind of like, eh, but they were consistent. This is something that needed to be within the Street Fighter universe. It seemed like they, I don't know, they're just too busy force-feeding you that formulaic stuff. I mean, Street Fighter's been around for how long? And before they get to a sequel, they give you the same thing over and over. The next sequel has the same content with little or no change. Art style changes, but the content stays exactly the same. You know, and I like Alpha. Don't get me wrong, I love it. But... You know, Chun-Li managed to get a couple changes in her design and that are actually, they're part of the canon. There's my version, but everyone else suffered. I mean, look at Ken and Ryu. They only changed with color. They still have the same build. I mean, and I get it. That's part of the charm of the characters, but same build. The only thing that changed was Ken's hair and his gloves. Same thing with Ryu, his uh, hair and his headband. His hair went from being black to being brown. I mean, I don't know. Formulaic, I don't know. Simplistic, I guess. But the idea is that, you know, when you have designs like this, you should be able to amp up the design every outing, not just, you know, a few of them. And these designs should be able to stand the test of time. 